today. The U.S. is sending 3,000 troops back to Afghanistan among a quickly deteriorating circumstance. We've got more on that. And uh, San Francisco to mandate proof of full vaccination to enter some indoor spaces. I have a feeling the panelists are going to have a lot to say about that one, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez. Happy Friday. I was just accidentally eating my hair as I was talking, so we're off to a good start today. Uh, I've got a new face at the table, but not a new face to the studio here at Blaze TV. We've got Chris Cruz, who is my producer. Yes. Who is um, who is joining us. I know Yaku's going to be here later, and he was late, and I actually have, he, he, you are former military. Yes. So we're talking about Afghanistan, uh -huh. so I thought it appropriate to have someone who really knows a lot more than if, and if it's not the Jason Butro, right, mm. right, right, which is kind of like, well, we're I mean we're just happy to have someone who's not me or or John Doyle. You're not happy to have me, political commentator John Doyle. No, I'm happy to have you. You give me a hard time when I came in six minutes late. This other guy's six? not even. It was ten minutes late, and I'm still here. This other guy's not even showing up for <laughs> a block. You had to bring on your producer. <laughs> I know, I was like, well, you're lucky because you're not the latest one. Right. So you get off a little bit easier. Right. Um, so let's get into this Afghanistan situation because I know that, um, what, when, when was it last month that Joe Biden decided to just leave, U.S. troops were leaving in the middle of the night. They didn't let anyone know. Um, it just was like kind of a very strange situation. And uh, actually, let's listen to Joe Biden on July 8th. Chris, what, what is this? What is he saying here? Set this up. He, he was, they were asking a question about, hey, what's going to happen if you withdraw all these troops from Afghanistan? And he, in my opinion, just blew off the question. Mm, okay. All right. Let, let's watch that. Mr. President, how serious was the corruption among the Afghanistan government to this mission failing there? Well, first of all, the mission hasn't <laughs> failed yet. There is uh, in Afghanistan um, in all parties, there's been corruption. The question is, can there be an agreement on unity of purpose? What is the objective? For example, it started off, there were going to be negotiations between the Taliban and the Afghan National Security Forces and the Afghan government. That, that didn't, come to, didn't come to fruition. So the question now is, where do they go from here? That, the jury is still out. But the likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. Yes, ma'am. Highly unlikely, Sarah. I think he wishes he could have a do-over on that answer. I know he also said, someone said, is it inevitable that the Taliban's gonna take back over? And he was like, nah, nah that's not, no. It's, that's not inevitable, please. Uh, so here we see full withdrawal in Afghanistan. And I, predictably, I think to anyone with a brain, uh, they, the Taliban comes, takes back over, and uh, let's see, they say, the Associated Press said, Afghan government forces are collapsing even faster than U.S. military leaders thought possible just a few months ago when President Joe Biden ordered a full withdrawal. Now, I find this interesting because I am not a U.S. military leader. I actually am not, like, I'm, foreign relations uh, is not my strong suit, and I even knew this. So I don't have very much faith in our U.S. military leaders when they just had they had no idea that this could be happening. Uh, but here we have uh, the Taliban in, as I said, a quickly deteriorating situation. The Biden administration is pleading with them to spare the U.S. embassy in Kabul while we go and uh, like remove our people from the embassy, which is really great when you're begging terrorist organizations to just spare you. Surely nothing bad could happen. Did we that. forget Benghazi? Uh, I'm sure they would like it if you did. Because isn't that exactly what we're trying to do right now? Like, all of a sudden, so I was in Afghanistan in Bagram, and I was talking to Jensen this morning, and I was like, hey, do you really think, like, they're going to, like, completely overrun the Taliban? It's going to take over Afghanistan. And he brought us such a good point. 
he said before Chris, before President Biden said, hey, we're going to remove, he was like, it's going to be until maybe, uh, maybe a year, to f six months to a year, a maybe. He now changed his mind. He said, Chris, I have a theory that what's going to happen is September 10 is going to come. They're going to invade and they're going to take the Capitol on September 11. Mm. And I'm like, that makes sense mm -hmm. because the, the, the Taliban is such a horrible organization. Mm -hmm. And when I was there training the Afghanis, every time we got attacked by the Taliban, they will flee. And we had to tell them, hey, no, you can't do that. Yes, it's scary, but guess what? You signed up for this, just like I signed up for this. You got to stand your ground. And they never stood their ground. Mm. And it's highly upsetting to see. So, like, I pulled some pictures for you of what the Taliban has taken over. And look at that. They've taken Humvees. Yeah. They've taken MRAPs. Yeah, all They've taken our... uh, military aircrafts, like those uh, Funded drones, by us. Funded right. by us. Yeah. When I was in Iraq and Afghanistan, I was guard. I was guarding those assets. Mm -hmm. Now they have it, mm -hmm. and it's so it's upsetting just... because I lost friends defending those bases, protecting those assets like the Toyotas, the Ford, the Humvees, the MRAPs, mm -hmm. and now it's theirs. Right. Yeah. It feels. I'm sure it feels like it's all for nothing. Um, I, John. So I'm not necessarily like I don't want to be the world's police, right? I don't think that we should just be everywhere all the time for no reason, with no plan, no strategy. But it does feel like this was all very much just like, hey, we're just gonna like stick our lick our fingers, stick it up to the air, and then just oh, on a whim, we're gonna pull everyone out with no plan, no strategy, and now all of a sudden we're sending troops back in. It just all feels very poorly thought out. Yeah, quite literally everything that we arguably had accomplished in Afghanistan over the last 20 years is being erased within a matter of weeks yeah. uh, by the Taliban. So we have a trillion dollars invested into this, mm -hmm. thousands of American lives lost, and like, what do we have to show for it? Nothing. The founding fathers were pretty clear about their, their attitudes on foreign policy, particularly like nation building. Like, mm -hmm. let us be a shining example to the rest of the world, but there's no reason for us to go over there and try to nation build. And I think the, the last 60 years of U.S. foreign policy could best be represented by trying to hang a picture in your house with your hand and you're holding it there, and the second you walk away, it is going to fall down. Maybe it shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't even be doing that in the first place. It's right. like these people have an independent culture from us, and cultures exist, and people exist, and it's like we might want them to be liberal, and maybe there's a minority of people who think that that would be cool. But we're doing something now that I would refer to as like the paradox of militant liberalism, like liberalism being the idea that you can live and let live and do what you want, but we're going to force them to do that with M4s, and like these people don't want to do that. And if the men in their country who do want to do that don't want to take up arms and fight back, like he was talking about, not defending the assets. Why do our men have to do that for them? What purpose is being achieved? Nothing. Mm, that's a great point, Chris. You want to respond? Yeah, to that? And, and the one thing that I saw over and over and over was the handing out of every time you went off base to do a coin operation that was established by the Obama administration, I got frustrated because it wasn't us teaching them, hey, this is your this is your land, you need to defend it. It was more like, hey, here's some money. We literally have went off base with money, with food, because they come up to us and just pour out the hand, like, please feed us. I'm like, what about, hey, come work for us. We do have a program that you could work for the base as soon as you pass all the qualifications mm -hmm. and you should be good. But no, they just wanted that free handout because they knew an American came by, hey, Sergeant, Sergeant, can I get some food? Mm -hmm. No, how about you work for it? How about you join our side, give us some intel, we'll pay you for that intel, and then now you can sustain your family. But most of it, it was, they were learning what America now sees as normal of, let me hand out and the government's gonna feed me. Right. It is nonsense. And then now we're paying it because like you said, we've trained this Afghani police, we've trained this Afghani military, but they, do they really wanna do it? And most of them, they didn't wanna do it. They just mm -hmm. wanted the money catching and, and play both sides, play the Taliban and then play us and then highest bidder gets the, the job done. Yeah, except, I mean, there's only one, when you're talking about the United States or the Taliban, like, there's one entity there that will behead you and, you know, kill your family, and there's one entity there who obviously is not going to do that. So it's just hard to understand why they wouldn't want to fight for their own homeland. I, I never understood that because it was something, like, for me, I'm proud mm -hmm. of my heritage. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of what, and I want to reserve that. Right. When I went over there, it was more like, not even survival, because if I want to survive, I want to defend my house, right. my, my, right. my, it was more like, 
a status quo of like, hey, you know, the military's here, we're used to it, you know, the Russians invaded them, then we came in and took the you know, Russians out. So it, they've never had this soul of, hey, let me just try to do this myself. We always had someone help us. Mm -hmm. And until they learned a hard lesson, and I don't want no one to die, but the Afghani and all these people that were, you know, I don't want to be the police world. Right. I don't want to do that. Right. But until they stand up and say, hey, it's time for you to literally put up your big boy pants and defend what you want. If not, bad people want to come and is it our job to really help them? Right. I don't know. And, and that sounds so bad. Like, I don't know. I prefer, I don't know, maybe help our border. We're being overrun by the border. We're being overrun well, let's by help ourselves first. I always <laughs> thought that. And yeah. even when I was in the military, I never understood why are we being deployed to Afghanistan, Iraq, when we have problems ourselves here. It, mm -hmm. makes, it has never made sense to me. Yeah. That's what's interesting, too, because when you live in a country like America or in the West, you don't really understand how these different attitudes manifest across the world in different cultures, like with what you mentioned with the work ethic. We don't realize that the American work ethic is, I think, traced back to like Scotland and like the Protestant work ethic, or our sense of morality is almost exclusively derived from Christianity or even um, largely Puritanism. And so it's like you go to other parts of the world and they're like, can I have food? And you're like, yeah, you can't, but you just have to work for it. And they're like, why? Like, they don't get it. Or you see some of these migrants that, like, go into Europe and you see them, like, robbing people and taking their things from them, like, when they're sitting down at a cafe and they'll, like, get confronted. You can't take my stuff. Why? Because it's mine, but I want it. Like, they don't understand, like, that set of values that we've adapted in this country and that have been so successful for us. They just can't. And you can try to, like, teach them that, but they're just going to overrun you. Yeah. Uh, all right, we've got more to come, inclu including, Chris, you mentioned the border, including the uh, DHS secretary admitting in leaked audio that the border crisis is apparently unsustainable. Now oh, there's a crisis again. So that's good that they finally recognize that. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Bonner Wine. So, uh, and, you know, Chris being my producer, by the way, Chris, thank you for being here for this segment. I know. Uh, I opened it for you. Yeah. I just opened that shipment for you. Yeah, so it, it which I can tell because it still has like the, the little, yeah, the, the styrofoam on it, which I, j I just want to let you guys know when you get this wine, do not drink the styrofoam packing. Don't do that. You just want the wine that's inside because let me tell you what, the wine that's inside is amazing wine. They have these vineyards uh, down in Argentina that they grow these grapes up to like 9,000 feet, which you might not realize if you're not into wine, you don't realize what an amazing wine those grapes grown at that high altitudes make this stuff, all right? These wines come from deep within the Andes Mountains. They're made by the same families uh, for over 200 years. And Chris, I don't know if you remember this, but we had to actually stop selling this not that yes. long ago because they were flying off the shelves and they couldn't keep them in stock. Um, I believe but, Chad Prather, have you seen his set? Yes, it's full yeah, of wine. all these wines. I have seen the set and I keep stealing the wine from him. Same. Yeah. I took two bottles yesterday. <laughs> so, I have to replace them with the box we just got. Don't tell him. All right. These go great with a, you know, a steak maybe. If you like some steak, make sure it's medium rare. We don't accept any other way of cooking steaks. You got to go over to cowgirlwine2021.com. You will find a Malbec from the third highest vineyard in the world. All right. No inflated prices. You are getting top quality wine for about half the price. You're going to get 50% off today. No promo code necessary. Just go to cowgirlwine2021.com. That is cowgirlwine2021.com. Uh, in some leaked audio that was first obtained by Fox News, Department of Homeland Security um, uh, Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas uh, said that the border crisis is unsustainable and that we are going to lose if borders are the first line of defense. Let's do we have that? Let's let's um, let's listen to some of that. Behind closed doors, in this leaked audio talking to Border Patrol agents, Mayorkas says the situation is more dire than he is publicly willing to admit. This is unsustainable. Uh, these numbers cannot continue. We cannot um, get to a point where we were a couple weeks ago, and we're going to make sure that doesn't happen. We're looking at the policy options. Weird, because I feel like we've been saying this since January when we started seeing the unprecedented numbers coming in. Uh, by the way, just uh, for uh, just to give you some some clarity on how that's still going, um, there were two hundred and twelve thousand six hundred and seventy two illegal immigrants who were at the border in the month of July. That is a 13 percent increase over the number of immigrants that were uh, apprehended in the month of June. So. <laughs> 
nowhere to go but up, apparently, when you are the Biden administration. By the way, just to kind of put this into some more perspective, um, Joe Biden, while all of this is going on, while all of, uh, you know, the Taliban is taking over Afghanistan and that whole situation is going on, while we have inflation, uh, while we have a leaked video of Hunter Biden, who is like talking about his third laptop being stolen, uh, you know, talking to a prostitute about his laptop being stolen. He thinks it was uh, Russian drug dealers. Nothing to see here, you guys, because Joe Biden is taking a vacation. And by the way, Mark Noller, a uh, reporter on Twitter, said, by my count, this is Biden's 18th trip home to Delaware, uh, all of part of 48 days. Compares at the same point in presidency to Trump, seven trips to Mar-a-Lago, uh, five to Bedminster, Obama, one trip home to Chicago, and G.W. Bush, seven trips to his Texas ranch. Biden's 18th trip home to Delaware to go on vacation while the country and the world crumble around him. Gentlemen, yeah, yeah. Billions, by the way. Yeah, I'm here. Yes. Thanks, Chris. Thanks You're amazing. Here. And thank you. Uh, 18th trip in seven months. Right. Versus a presidency of four years, a presidency of eight years, because he's he's old and decrepit and needs help. <laughs> I mean, he needs help. Did you see him get lost in the garden at the White House? <laughs> Even though they were telling they, him where to go. They're pointing this way, president. And he goes, <laughs> where, where? Where? And then the one agent is looking at what are we doing here? <laughs> no, look, this is this is this is a big problem. Um, there is no focus on real issues in our country. The White House is not focusing. Saki is not w willing to answer real questions. They get really, really of offended mm -hmm. when you ask them tough questions. Where's the president? Where does he stand on policy? The border, real issues, you know, uh, the state of affairs in our nation. It's much easier to just... Um, Even when they ask them for transparency, can't. they get defensive. Well, there's no answers. Right. And I think the concern is even if you give him real answers, I don't know that they can trust him at this moment at a hot mic. If they really give him, okay, this is our stance on this, right or wrong, and it's probably going to be wrong, it's going to be a spin, but will Joe stick to even the script that they give him? So I think they're really in a corner. And I, I'm just, in the last week, I've really dealt with a lot, of, a lot of liberals, right? And I'm seeing a lot of liberals saying, this is not at all what I voted for. Uh, I got the jab, not me, them. I'll never mm -hmm. get the jab, never, right? But they got, but... Now I got to wear a mask and they're right. complaining. I said, what were you thinking? You think these guys are going to play nice at some point? But the biggest concern for me is the outside world looks in and they see we do not have a handle of our state of affairs. Mm -hmm. We don't have control of our country. We do not. We don't have control of the border. The White House is flailing. I mean, you know, where is Kamala? She's basically fell, fallen off the map to a degree because I think she's a liability at this point. Mm -hmm. So Biden is alone and he's in a spot of dementia yeah well and uh john i just if we don't have borders do we even have a country they're just well no we don't because you can't change the composition of the country and expect it to remain the same country like we have a legal process and that's fine but you can't literally just open the borders and let 200,000 people and that's only the people they encounter too it's probably right. more like half a million 600,000 that are allowed to come in and it's like how do you expect that country to remain the same if you're just going to open it up to the rest of the world it's not going to happen and so there's no excuse for Joe Biden traveling not only because of the state of the country but also like I mean no disrespect by this, but I can't imagine there's anything that cool going on in Delaware unless there's like a really great soft serve place that he's going to to get, what was it, chocolate, chocolate chip. Chocolate, chocolate chip. Yeah, and like you mentioned too with the transparency, that's really the most demoralizing part of all of this is that it's not that they're incompetent, it's that they're like allowing this to happen. It's much more a suicide than it is a murder, which is really disappointing because then there's all these things that they're using to distract us, whether it's, oh, look what Hunter Biden is doing or look at the Cuban people, what they're doing. It's like, what about what we're doing? We don't even have a southern border secure. The people who are in charge of securing it are saying in leaked audio like yeah it's wraps like there's nothing we yeah can do. but it also that that leaked audio shows you that look cbp and my account with cbp and it's a lot right these are amazing men and women yes. that serve and they are they are under the gun right oh yeah trying to toe the line trying to honor the presidency trying to honor chain of command yeah. say look i don't want to lie to the people but this is uh, this is not sustainable right and it is absolutely unsustainable i mean i was just with law enforcement for two days the training with law enforcement and the reports are insane. If I can tell you what is really happening with fentanyl, mm. Sarah, 
Do you know that the cartels right now are no longer smuggling fentanyl powder into the U.S. because their, their customers are dying because people don't know how to use fentanyl? They're formulating the fentanyl pills in Mexico. We have a half a million fentanyl pills that has come in to Arizona since January. It is insane what is happening in our border. It's a, it's a wide open, a freight train can drive through there, bringing who knows what into the country. And now you got CBP even saying, look, this is not sustainable in private. Well, but I did see an article that internally, uh, I think it was uh, DHS that was urging its employees not to use the term Mexican cartel. And you just use the term Mexican cartel. So because I just it is a cartel. Right, but that could be offensive to the actual Mexican cartel. They might get you, their feelings Yeah, you don't want to offend them. them. They <laughs> do some really weird stuff. That I'm here to offend the Mexican cartel. <laughs> they traffic children. We talk about MS-13 yeah. specifically, okay? No, it's a it's cartel. Just, it's, a it's like we're not going to call them, you know, jihadist no. or radical right. Islam right. or radical terrorist, Obama. This is the same play. You can't, you can't call them the Mexican cartel because we need to give the Taliban a seat at the table. Right. Well, I this is the era of. I don't want to disrespect the cartel. They see, I, no, seriously, like <laughs> no, I if the cartel declares <laughs> war on you, you're done. It's yeah. like, it like, you know, what are you going to do? Be on guard for the rest of forever? No, they're going to find you. Like they do weird stuff down there. Sometimes this is weird. Maybe I shouldn't say this for my public image, but I'm going to every like three months or so to remind myself of how this is not the natural state of the world. I go on like one of those like websites where they have videos of like cartel people chopping each other's heads off just to remind myself that like it can be like, yeah, no, like seriously, like it could be like this in a matter of years if we're not very careful. That's John, it, is like, it is like that currently in areas of the world yeah. by these same types of people mm -hmm. and these same mentalities. And so when it is a cartel, it's a cartel. When it's a criminal organization, it's a criminal organization. Mm -hmm. But by changing the name and, and, and making it less than and yeah. softening the blow, no, why, why are we doing that? I mean, if it's a burglar, it's a burglar. You're going to say, what is a friendly neighbor who just... Well, you don't want to offend the burglar. Got lost. You don't want to mm -hmm. offend the burglar. Come mm -hmm. on, this is ridiculous. This whole notion that... We, and this is how you move culture. You change language. Right? So, mm -hmm. no, I'm sorry, I don't. I refuse to. You literally change the language, yeah. too. Literally, yeah. yeah. I refuse to do that. I absolutely refuse, Sarah, because, because it breeds a sense of tolerance towards dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And you can't, when you tolerate dysfunction, it'll take over. You can't. This, this is one of those cases where you draw a line in the sand and you say, no, absolutely not. They're bad for our country. They bring drugs into our country that kills our kids, 100%. They're overdosing. Our teen suicides through the roof. They use a lot of the drugs that they're bringing in across the border, right? Illegal immigration. You, you understand that we're going to have illegally imported 1% of our national population this year, by the end of the year. Three million people is what's, what's believed that will come across the border. 360 million people, so just under 1% of our population in one year, mm -hmm. in one presidency. I mean, come on, you can't, you gotta call a spade a spade, right? And then go in on the house and say we're gonna fight. John, last word on this. Where are all the all the people on the left who were just so they cared so much about all of these illegal immigrants being held in these uh, you know facilities and they were unclean, they were way too overcrowded. We were told that it was literally concentration camps. Uh, right they're not there, and I think that oftentimes people on the right assume that our framework for thinking is like the natural state of things but you have to understand like these people literally do not have agency like they don't have the internal monologue and they don't think about these things they just watch the tv and assume that they're being told the truth and they mm. follow suit my evidence for this is that people think that wearing cloth masks will prevent them from getting a virus <laughs> this is kind of a crude story but i was in an uber because as you know my car was totaled yes. and my uber driver just just totally ripped like it was very bad and I he didn't roll the windows down and I was wearing my mask because if you don't they suspend you from uber right. and I was like why the hell do I have to smell and you think like a viral infection is going to be prevented by this mask it was just so bad but yeah these people like you know they're hypocrites sure but more so I think the point is that like they will never be able to be held accountable to these standards because they themselves don't even believe them okay so I feel like we have a solution for uber you just just roll the windows just crack the windows and all the germs will just fly out the window mm -hmm. they do along with they the, do that along yeah with, along they with like crack the, the windows cars. and yeah it was like, <laughs>
right. was so angry. We've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Chamonix. So there are, um, I get a lot of, of questions about, you know, what do you use for makeup? What do you use for skincare? Um, because if you follow me on social media, you know I'm really into that. Well, let me tell you, I have been using Chamonix for the last several months, and I have loved what it has done for my skin. They have this uh, new Genucel serum with plant stem cell technology. And um, they've got a, a face wash that I use every day that, by the way, makes me feel like I've just taken a wonderful bath in the rainforest. The smell is amazing. It makes my skin super soft and supple. Um, they've got a ton of products, anti-aging products. Um, but everything that I have used from them has been amazing. And my skin is really, really seeing the difference. So you really got to try it if you are maybe like me and maybe you've had a couple kids. Maybe you don't sleep as much as you used to. And you start waking up in the morning and you're like, I don't remember looking like I'm 84 years old. Well, here's, here's Genucel's secret. I'm actually 84 years old and I look like I'm, what, 45? 27. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right 27, answer. 27, Sarah. That's the right answer. You know, everybody who just listened to that is going to go, oh, please, Sarah, <laughs> come on. No, I'm, I'm in all seriousness. You have got to try this. If you are concerned about anti-aging products and making sure that you want to get something that is going to make you look young again, you got to try Genucel. I love it. Uh, you got to try it. Go to Genucel, lovegenucel.com slash why uh, you can get 50% off all Jenny Cell packages for summer at Love Jenny Cell. That is at love, L O V E G E N U C E L dot com slash why. The FDA has approved an additional booster vaccination dose for those with weak immune systems or those who have received organ transplants. They just announced this yesterday evening. Uh, because, you know, nothing says that you trust your vaccine more than saying, by the way, you're going to need more of them at frequent intervals. So I'm, that's really exciting news. Uh, also, I would just like to say people with weak immune systems, we don't actually know what these mRNA um, vaccines are, are doing to their immune systems. So I would just like, to, I mean, but hey, I'm not a scientist. So maybe I should not be speaking on these things. That's what I'm told from the left constantly. And by the way, you can't just be a scientist. You have to be a government scientist mm -hmm. or else you are not allowed to have credibility. Um, but I would also like to add to this conversation when we are discussing vaccines, which I do want to get, gentlemen, your thoughts on this third vaccination shot for at-risk patients. Uh, San Francisco is also going to require proof of full COVID-19 vaccination to enter indoor places such as bars, restaurants, gyms, clubs, theaters, and other entertainment venues. This is set to go into effect August 20th for patrons and October 13th for staff, which is weird because I feel like if they're all interacting together, it's weird that they wouldn't all need, I mean, if you're going to have a rule, maybe make it make sense. But as we've seen throughout the last year and a half, none of the rules make sense. They're all completely arbitrary uh, and a negative COVID test no longer will be considered an exemption to being fully vaccinated under this new mandate. So we're, we're, we're headed in really great places, guys. Yeah, so now we're gonna see the tourism numbers plummet in San Francisco. This is a good thing. Yeah. Right, because yeah. their choir sings they're coming for your children, so you shouldn't go there anyway. Also, there's a lot okay. of poop in the streets. There's a lot of stuff in the streets. I was there recently. It is a cesspool. Don't mm -hmm. go. Look at a postcard of the Golden Gate and just pass by. Just don't go. You know. Uh, so San Francisco's a no. So hopefully the numbers plummet. Hopefully they hurt financially, right, for lack of tourism because it's a stupid policy. They're not the, the only ones, look, though. These, no, they're not the only ones. These updates, or whatever you want to call them, 2.0, 3.0, 5.0 vaccine shots will not end. It will not end. This is a mechanism to control. You don't know what's in the first vaccine. And if you've gotten a vaccine, I'm not speaking for me, not the network, not for Sarah. John, I don't know where you stand on yeah, it. You can probably speak if for me. If you're in my way, move over, buddy, because I'm going this way. Um, Vaccines for me is a no-go, absolutely no. My kids will not get them. No vaccine, zero. I'm the, I am the anti-vaxxer, as in no vaccines. Forget about COVID vaccine, no vaccines, right? So you don't need to play with my kids. 
your kids. They don't need to. We don't need you. We're going to go forward where my kids are going to be cognitively sound and they're going to be happy. They're not going to get an update every six months where they put who knows, God knows what in it, Sarah, where they can't even tell me what's in the first one, where people are absolutely getting sick when getting the vaccine. It's knocking the crap out of your immune system. They're contracting the virus. You're shedding. Take it if you want to, but this is not going to stop. I'm telling you today by this administration until people say stop. So can I throw into the equation here? Because I think this is this is an important part of the story. There is going to be a COVID compliance team that the it says county health officials say the city's COVID compliance team, also known as the CERT team, because they have to have a cute little acronym, will be reactivated on a smaller scale to help with educating businesses. So what I hear, call me crazy, but what I hear are a bunch of government officials are going to come in and put pressure on you as a business owner if you aren't trying to enforce making sure that people are vaccinated to enter your building. Bullying. I got a bully. These people, and this is further vindication that these people lack agency. They went from punch Nazis to <laughs> show me your papers yes. so quickly. Yes. It's incredible. And I actually, I received a, a message from a friend that I grew up with and he's always been very unhealthy, very overweight, just doing unhealthy things. And he swiped up on my Instagram story and he sent me a message and it like made me very angry, but it also kind of broke my heart. He said something to the effect of, just please get the vaccine so I don't have like a surgery complication and have to like get delayed eight hours or something because this kid has a ton of health problems because of it. And it's like, yeah, because if you know you live that way, COVID is going to affect you disproportionately. So it's like part of me was like, why are you so selfish that you spend yes. two decades yes. treating your body like yes. crap and now it's my fault? But then it's also like you realize how these people really just are desperate. Like they don't have the self-assurance to look at authority and speak truth to it and say, no, we're actually not going to do this. And so bad things happen to them because of the power structures. And then they look at people like us and they're like, can you please just, I want to go back to Coachella. Can you please just take the shot? It's very sad. Now, also, he mentioned too, the resistance factor. If you look at the amygdala in your brain, the part that says no, it has been shrinking over time in the last few decades. And what we find is that the less testosterone men have, the smaller their amygdalas are. Mm -hmm. Conservatives have larger amygdalas than liberals do because we say, no, I don't want to do that. And so you look at like the propaganda that they, that they promote in terms of like, you know, we hear this now with, oh, you have anxiety here. Take the normal mm -hmm. pills. Just relax, calm down. And over time, what that does is literally make you less biologically capable of saying no to things. It's mm -hmm. very scary. It's, it's like actually biological warfare that no yeah, one talks no, about. Yeah, no, it's 100%. Wow. It's chemical, it's emotional, it's metaphysical, it's physical, it's biological. This is why I'm saying testosterone up, <laughs> fight back, get outside. Heck, I'm having my two-year-old pee against a tree outside in the yard, literally. Which, as a mother, just... Uh, literally. Pee outside is so fun. No, we're doing that. We're it, standing outside it's and we're doing it because... It's a boy he, thing. He's, have you ever peed on the side of the highway? He's a man. We got Africa blood on us. He's a man. <laughs> you ever peed he's on the side of the fight. highway? Yes, buddy, Africa, we, you got to come Is with that, me. Well, no, so okay. here's what happened. I was we on a road trip <laughs> and it was it was an emergency. So I had to pee, so I pulled over. And then it was so much fun, like the wind and it. It's free, it, buddy. Now it's at a point where it's like, do I it hands pee. free. I you got to do it hands free, but yeah. let it I'll go. I'll throw the hazards on and like this rush hour traffic and just. Really no, crazy it's about men, men need to stand up. But, but listen, you're right. Yes. Yes, it, there is actual chemistry happening in our, and it is, it, it is a lack of fight, internal fight, yeah. of saying this is not right. And here's what happens. Now it's mask and it's, and it's a vaccine. Mm -hmm. The next thing, and you saw this through the crazy riots, men beating a girl with a fist and guys taking their phones out, mm -hmm. filming men beating on a woman. Lack of fight won't step in and say, I'm not going to put myself at harm. Are you kidding me? Come on. And this is you'll have the weakest society on planet. And I'll close with this. Mm -hmm. While China, mind you, have you seen what they're doing? They're breeding supermen. They're literally encouraging men to get outside, to work out, to lift, to be test testing testosterone. They're literally taking their culture, the men in their culture. Go look at the growth rate in China. Go look at the size of men, how it's increased over the last, and who, what else they're shooting them up with. Mm -hmm. But they are proactively saying, we need a strong male class in China, while America's going, no, we need to weaken the male. We need, we need Ken and Barbie to walk around. That's such a good point too, because it shows the inversion that we've had where 
60, 70 years ago when the culture was more conservative and it was more oriented towards the community. Now it's like very liberal and everyone just cares about themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's like 70 years ago, if some woman's getting beat up, that is wrong. I'm gonna go like break the guy's teeth. Yes. But now it's like, I'm gonna show everyone that I was there and I saw this crazy thing happen because it's like about me somehow. This woman is being assaulted and I'm going to make it about me by getting the footage of it. It's very sad. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, we've, please, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Built Bar. So, I actually, I had these two Built Bars that I was going to give to the gentleman. Well, yeah, but you guys were both late, so I'm keeping them for myself. I'm keeping them for myself, but right I here I late. have... I was late. I don't know. Were you late? No, I right, was late. I camped out. I had a 10. I was 20 minutes. You both were late. I was later. You were later. You were later. <laughs> I'm sorry. I humbly apologize. Oh my gosh, it's I, fine. I it's but totally I want that fine. bar though. It look because we got the Rocky Road in. Oh. And it's amazing. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold it over here so that he just is like, ah, I want it so bad. Uh, and then we have a mint brownie here, which also is amazing for those of you who like the peppermint flavor with the chocolate, which I am obsessed with. Uh, but the good thing about Built Bar is that when you're eating it, it is a protein bar, so it's low in calories, low in uh, low in sugar, uh, but it's high in fiber and it's high in protein, so it's gonna fill you up, it's good for you, but it tastes like you're cheating on your diet. But you're not, because you're eating a Built Bar, you're not eating a candy bar. They've got uh, some other flavors like coconut, double chocolate, salted caramel, a ton more. And by the way, they do have mixed boxes if you want to try a couple of each so you can figure out which ones you like the most and then buy a ton of them because they're going to be a staple in your pantry. Trust me on this, my pantry is so full of Built Bars. My husband's like, please stop buying these because we don't have any more room in the pantry. You gotta go to built.com, use promo code NEWS15. You'll save 15% off of your order. That is NEWS15 over at built.com. So when we're talking about all of this COVID situation, you have to have the vaccine to enter public establishments, uh, things of that nature. I do think it is an important part to point out how bad and misleading the media has been on this. Um, before I get to, I've got this story that I'm gonna get to, but I just wanted to, I, this just popped in my head earlier this morning. I was reading, there's some story going around that, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis is in everyone's crosshair. So there's a story going around that, well, four teachers died from COVID as the school fights with, you know, Ron DeSantis who won't let them do mask mandates. That's that's the framing of the headline, right? And when you actually look at the details, they're talking about Broward County schools, which haven't opened yet. So they're trying to conflate here, Ron DeSantis's policy, which is let people choose. He's not saying you're not allowed to wear a mask. He's just saying you can't force people to wear a mask or force people to put masks on their children. So you're looking at these headlines that are conflating his policy with teachers dying when in fact that's not the case. There's another one here from uh, from here in Texas, the Texas Tribune, which uh, issued, issued a major correction yesterday after falsely reporting that 5,800 children had been hospitalized with COVID-19 over a seven day period. Uh, here is the correction. Uh, it says, an earlier version of the story overstated the number of children who have been hospitalized in Texas. The story said over 5,800 children had been hospitalized during a seven-day period in August, uh, but that actually referred to children hospitalized with COVID-19 since the pandemic began. In actuality, that 5,800 children, oh, that was actually 783. Uh, between July and August of this year. But again, like we've said in the past, the first we, story gets all the attention. Right, and correct. then the rebuttal gets correct. page seven. And by the way, this was hospitalized with COVID, yeah. not from COVID, yes. because there are also RSV cases going on. Um, gee, I wonder like if it and could be tied to the fact that we have not, we've d completely ruined our kids' immune systems by keeping them indoors and making them sanitize everything and every part of their body at all times. Um, but I digress. But I mean, 5,800 children, oops, sorry, we actually meant 783. Kind of a big deal. No, it's a huge deal, and it's like Biden numbers, right? I mean, half the country, <laughs> oh, more than the population. Oh, yeah. we vaccinated. 380 million Maybe, people yeah, we, vaccinated. Yeah, exactly. Wow. What are you complaining about every day? No, but but let's, I love these kind of stories because then I want to go in and, okay, so tell me how many kids went in with a broken arm who also had COVID? How many kids mm -hmm. went in with RSV? 
with flu because it actually still does exist. I mean, they're, they're testing everyone. No, it doesn't matter. It, it just doesn't matter. It's all COVID, COVID. The thing about DeSantis, though, is they're looking for entrapment. They're trying to trap him. And like they try oh, to go, scared. aha, they're gotcha, scared. They're scared gotcha, we got you. You, you, you said no masks in schools and now people died, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But Cuomo could kill hundreds of, not thousands right. of people in old age homes and they wouldn't say a thing. I say just keep walking the line, DeSantis. When you do the right thing, fear God, fear country, keep trucking, go forward. Hopefully our friend in Austin can step up and be half a governor that DeSantis is. And maybe, uh, you know, we, we did sign some really good things this week, though, by the way. I mean, we had a big victory this week. So, so we'll see. But DeSantis is a real threat at this moment for the left. Yeah, John. I have so much contempt for journalists. I mean, it's it well because you get to a point where you're like, I, I just feel like this is on purpose. No, there, I mean, it is. This and is on purpose. That's why if the if the right wants a future in this country, we're gonna have to like basically overturn NYT versus Sullivan because they just they print lies and they get away with it, and that's just like that's not right. And the way the country is set up, if they have a monopoly on disseminating that information, we aren't going to have a future if they can just lie with impunity. Like. There was a, there's a guy who's given me a hard time recently, this journalist, and uh, I have like videos on my website that you can only watch if you're a member. And so he like bought a membership so we could watch the videos because he thought he was going to like catch me saying something bad. And somebody asked me a question like, are you alt-right? And I was like, oh no, because the alt-right is post-American. They, they don't want America. They hate America. Uh, they're atheists. I'm a Christian. Um, they're degenerate. They promote things like, you know, hedonism and alcohol. So I'm, no, I'm not. Like literally. I, and so then he wrote a story about it and he said, while Doyle on his secret members only video lamented the problems with the all right being like as though I am but I just wish that they were more akin to me and like these people are so dishonest and they exist to lie which is why I love Trump because he would just laugh at them because you know that these people take themselves so seriously they've got their little pen paper I'm breaking Watergate I'm really getting the story and it's like you're not a legitimate journalist you are a disgrace to the profession especially when they slander people like James O'Keefe who in my opinion is one of the only true journalists left mm -hmm. in the world and they would have the audacity to be like well that's not honest reporting because he didn't tell them that he was going to record what they were saying. It's like, who right. cares? Yeah, and I'll say, James and everybody at Veritas, we've got really good friends there. But, but I, I'll say this. It used to be a case where they would hide, hide a lie, like a needle in a haystack. Now you've got to really look hard for truth. Mm -hmm. It's all lies. It's predominantly lies. I would say 99% of what comes out of their mouths, if it's not a lie, it's, it's spinning the truth in a way to fit their narrative. Even when they report on something and it's quasi kind of accurate mm -hmm. it's still with a spin right mm -hmm. it's all lies it's become just and and for for some crazy reason and it's not just now it's been coming a long time i mean this is a decade you don't just flip a switch like that it's been coming a long time we've been becoming tolerant to the media running the country to the media becoming a propaganda arm for for politicians and now all of a sudden it's just full throttle because they're so emboldened that they that they literally have seen that they can get away with it i mean yeah I almost said after you, I'll just say it, after you steal an election, what else is left? You might as well just... And there it is. You might as well just go There it, it is. All right. Well, this is a good time for a break, so we're going to take one. We'll be right back. Aye, aye, aye. All right. This is the part of the program where I tell all of you lazy people out there who have not yet taken the like 10 seconds that it takes to go to wherever you get your audio podcasts. You gotta subscribe to the news and why it matters. And from there, you can rate it and review it. And obviously you're giving us five stars, like right off the bat, don't even have to think about that because this is, of course, if you're watching this, your favorite news program or perhaps your only news program go to. So we know you're gonna give us five stars. You're gonna write us a good review. Uh, you're gonna tell us how much you love Jakob Buyans and John Doyle, even when they talk about peeing on the program. And you're going to put it in the review and you might see your review read live on air, like the one today from, let's go to Rainier Mike, who says, uh, this show is the best. Sarah hosts like a Hall of Fame quarterback with a great team of guests. I love her strong and educated opinions, along with Pat, Elijah, Chad, who they have the 22 sign there. So pray through 2022.com. Uh, Eric, Yako, Stu, and Glenn, they have been the team needed to deliver the truth in a world full of lies and deception. I will just say I noticed that, that John Doyle's name needs to be mentioned. Okay. Do you feel that? I'm, sa I'm, t I'm asking Mention that. it again, and John Doyle. I don't need a participation trophy or whatever, but you I'll remember that. What was their name? Let us know. <laughs> I'm not telling you now. It's my, it's my viewer. I'll remember. Let us know. Give John Doyle some love so he feels better, okay?